thousands are missing. Who's not going to be home for the holidays? You see, more than 100,000 Americans will disappear this year and will never return home. Around the world, the numbers are astronomical. And the question on our mind is, why can't we find them? Is law enforcement doing enough to leverage the true crime community? And can the general public add to the search for our missing loved ones? Hello, everybody, and thanks for supporting Profiling Evil in 2021. I had plans of watching the year quietly close the door in anticipation of 2022, but I can't get the reality of these missing person numbers out of my mind. While many of us are standing under mistletoes and embracing loved ones, thousands of families endure the holidays with sadness and despair. Last week... I had a telephone conversation with David Robinson, the father of missing geologist from Arizona, Daniel Robinson. As our conversation was coming to a close, I wished David the very best as he faced the holidays without his son. He said something very poignant to me. He said, hold on to your loved ones tightly, for you don't know when they might be gone. (laughs) After a 40-year career looking at unsolved crimes, I've heard this comment too many times from too many parents, people just like Mr. Robinson. My intent was to relax through the holidays, but after a sleepless night, I wanted to mention one more time a few of the cases that continue to occupy my thoughts. My hope is that my reminder will somehow reach the right people. Those of you who know something about these cases, More importantly, my hope is that that somebody out there will muster the courage necessary to step up and tell authorities where these missing people can be recovered. Can you imagine any greater gift at this holiday season than some form of closure in the search of a missing loved one? Now, as we get started, I hope that you'll share this video with all of your contacts and and very selfishly take a moment, please hit the like and subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get all of our notifications on other important videos. Now let's focus on a few of the missing persons cases that I think about a lot, especially during the last 12 months. You see, the United States Bureau of Justice suggests that there are roughly 800,000 people that are reported missing each year in the United States. <sighs> That's a city the size of San Francisco, California. And it means that one out of every 417 people across America disappear each and every year. Now that equates to more than 19 million people around the world. <laughs> That's 19 million people around the world reported missing each year. In the United States, data from the last 40 years will suggest that 87% of those people are going to come home sometime during the year. But that still leaves roughly 104,000 people every single year who disappear, never to be heard from again. Let that sink in a little bit, folks. I mean, we're talking cities the size of Berkeley, California, Burbank, California, or or Albany, New York, simply wiped off the map. Every human being that lives in those cities disappearing in that one year. Now, this map that we're looking at shows all of the cities in the United States that have a similar size population of 100,000 people. Imagine if they were simply disappearing, and yet every single year, hundreds of thousands of people disappear, never to be heard from again. I mean, we're talking people like Lauren DeMolo of Cape Coral, Florida. Lauren is described by her friend Angela as loving, caring, and so bubbly and happy all the time. She's just a sweetheart. She is just always loving, especially with her daughter. You could always just see the love. <laughs> Lauren disappeared in June of 2020 after walking to a nearby park from her home. Now, there's new information out that suggests that she was having some mental health crises. 
and that she'd been treated several times just before she left at, under the Baker Act. Now, why would it take 18 months for this information to come out? Could this have changed the focus of the investigation if it was made public earlier? Could it have changed the way law enforcement investigated the case or the way public searches went on for her welfare? Well, in that case, people are asking anyone with information about Lauren's disappearance to call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-780-TIPS. Now, look at the map of all these cities again in the United States. They have roughly the same population as the number of people who disappear permanently off the map. It's astounding to think of an entire community disappearing. And yet that's exactly what happens in incremental ways with names you've probably not heard of. Now, this one you maybe have. Heidi Plank, the missing California mother who's now presumed dead as searchers look for her body in a nearby landfill. They went there after DNA was discovered in a garbage chute at an apartment complex where Plank's dog was recovered after she disappeared. Heidi vanished in October of 2021, shortly after watching her 10-year-old son playing at a football game. Her friends and family can't come up with a reason why in the world she would have been inside that apartment complex. But it was there that her dog was found and her DNA was recovered. All her friends know is that she was tied to a business that's being investigated for absconding millions of dollars of client money. Did Heidi know too much? Or did she pose a risk to someone? Or was this simply a crime of opportunity? The Los Angeles Police Department Missing Persons Unit is asking anyone with information regarding her whereabouts to call them at 213-996-1800. Over the last year, we've chatted about some of these people who have permanently disappeared. The number of people who disappear around the world is simply too overwhelming to take time to figure it out. So please do it for your individual countries out there. But here in the USA, it includes people like Andrea Nabel, who's been missing since August of 2019. Her family is deeply saddened during this holiday season, evidenced by a statement that was recently made. They said, we don't feel let down. We are let down. <laughs> Referencing what they believe is now a cold case. Now, Nabel's father, Mike, said the Louisville Police Department assured him the case is open and active. But then he went on to say police won't talk to him or answer his questions. Now, there's newfound hope for the Nabel family who said they've been beaten up, but they don't feel like they're beaten. Mike Nabel says, we feel like we're strong enough to see this to the end. We hope we are. The family has gotten support through the true crime community and people like Joe Fancioli, a retired homicide detective who found the case on Facebook. Joe's added his 50 plus years of experience to help the family independently look at the case. This investigator's discovered some discrepancies in the timeline that might make a difference. We're going to see what happens next time this thing rolls around at the Kentucky Police Department. But if you know anything, please contact Kentucky Police. They are the official investigators in this case. And if you can help, give them a call at 855-746-0846. And, you know, one case I don't think I'll ever forget is the case of Kelly Brannon. This would-be musician who disappeared after an argument in Live Oak, Florida, has been on my mind a lot. Can a 36-year-old woman with a large circle of friends simply vanish? Her friend Cheryl says she's like unlike any other person she has ever met in her life, always interested in creating. She said she's just an incredible person. And yet she's gone, and her boyfriend seems to be sojourning on without her. I hope that you'll call the Live Oak Police Department and let them know if you know anything about Kelly's disappearance. Interest on her Facebook page remains high, and hopes have not diminished that she will at some point be recovered. 
Now, Profiling Evil has a special place in our hearts for Angela Green's case, and especially Angela's daughter, Ellie. We came to know Ellie through our work with the Dr. Phil show, and we've remained involved in her quest ever since then. As the Prairie Village, Kansas Police Department continues to investigate the case, Ellie has turned up the heat on her estranged father, Jeff, the last person known to have seen Angela before her disappearance. I'd like to add that he's also the person who gave Ellie inaccurate and misleading stories about her mother's disappearance, including falsely leading her to believe that he had buried her mother after an unexpected death at a nearby hospital. Well, Ellie has faced this tragedy without the support of her father, her aunts, or uncles. I am so disappointed that protecting her father's potential legal exposure seems to be more important to her immediate family than helping a grieving daughter who had to take a crash course in adulthood by herself. Ellie is now preparing a civil lawsuit against her father in hopes of forcing him to provide depositions about her mother's disappearance. She recently said, it's tough to see him put in a place where he could be responsible for my mom's death. But at the same time, Justice needs to be served, and he needs to answer questions. This child victim has taken her mother's case head on, and she's launched a GoFundMe page to raise money for local private investigators to help in a wrongful death lawsuit. I'd encourage you all to consider donating to her cause, and we're going to continue to do so as well. In the past year, the Prairie Village Police Department executed three search warrants in the case. But Johnson County Prosecuting Attorney Steve Howe has not filed any charges in the case. Perhaps Ellie's lawsuit will uncover some additional evidence that may help police and prosecutors find Angela Green's killer and bring them to justice. If you know something, please contact the Prairie Village Police Department. As one of the first channels to spotlight the case of missing and presumed murdered mom, Leela Cavett, uh, we're going to continue to follow this puzzling case too. It has so many twists and turns as we learn more about the suspect, a self-proclaimed witch doctor who lives in the South Florida community of Hollywood. I did my first video on this case in the days following her 2020 disappearance. I hope you'll go back and explore this case and make sure that you also check out the intriguing story map that we created for this case. The witch doctor, 39-year-old Shannon Ryan, has been charged now with second-degree murder and tampering with evidence in connection to Lila's disappearance. The witch doctor, 39-year-old Shannon Ryan, has been charged with second-degree murder and tampering with evidence in connection with Lila's disappearance. Leela's body hasn't been recovered yet, but prosecutors have gleaned enough evidence to file murder charges. And man, I congratulate them on having the courage to tackle this circumstantial case like this. We witnessed the same determination in the Suzanne Morphew case, and it makes me hope that the prosecutor in the Angela Green case is taking note. Now, if you have any information on Leela's case, please contact the Hollywood Police Department at 954-764-4357. You can also email tips to hollywoodpdtips at hollywoodfl.org. You know, another missing mother who wasn't home for the holidays was Maya Miliete. This case has had some movement with the arrest of her husband, Larry Miliete, who's now sitting in a California jail cell awaiting a jury trial for murder. He's one alleged killer who isn't going to make it home for the holidays, but that doesn't mean that he's been quiet. He's asking the family court to give his parents custody of their children rather than risking the court placing the children in the custody of Maya's sister, Mary Chris, and, and her husband, Richard. You remember those folks, don't you? They're the only people in the Maya case that, that have been looking for this missing mother week after week. Profiling Evil will continue to watch this case throughout the year as the criminal justice system grinds along, hoping that something 
will lead investigators to the location of Maya's body. As I think of missing moms, my thoughts turn to missing mother Suzanne Morphew. I wondered what another Christmas was like in the Morphew home this year without Suzanne. The girls have rallied around their father, who stands accused of murdering Suzanne. I, I, now, I understand what they've done. I mean, could you imagine losing your mother and then facing the possibility that your father was her killer? It's just too much to ask anyone. And I hope that they're finding a way to deal with this tragedy in their own personal lives. But the true crime community has watched this case with passion, including filling the courtroom each time there's a hearing. In five months, Barry Morphew is going to face a jury, and his defense team is not slowing down in their motions in his behalf. Suzanne's body has not been located. It's something the defense claims is proof that she's probably still alive. The prosecution, on the other hand, feels she was murdered by her husband when he discovered she was having an affair. Well, this case is going to continue to garner a whole lot of attention. And now that the snow's falling in the Rocky Mountains, it's likely going to be springtime until the next search party can go out looking for her, about the same time that his trial begins. Perhaps Barry will start looking for her in the spring since he hasn't been seen on any of the other searches that have been organized by the community, the sheriff's office, or Suzanne's family and friends. It's odd how similar some of the dynamics in the Morphew and Miliette case are when compared to the case of missing geologist Daniel Robinson. Daniel Robinson disappeared while working in Buckeye, Arizona in June of 2021. For the last six months, there hasn't been a day, a day that his father, David Robinson, hasn't been out searching for his son. He took finding his son so seriously that he moved from his southeast uh, USA home to the Arizona where he could be closer to the last place his son was seen alive. David Robinson, like Maya Miliete's sister and her husband, has put together large search parties each weekend while attempting to work with police investigators. He's leveraged social media, major news outlets, and the true crime community in the search for his son, a child that he believes has been murdered. Now, Buckeye police say there is no evidence of foul play or violent criminal activity. However, Robinson and his private investigator disagree with law enforcement's theory, saying that they have information suggesting it was murder. The Robinson private investigator told News Nation that he doesn't think Robinson was even in his car when it flipped over in the ravine that it was later discovered in. Now, Robinson has conducted grid searches throughout the entire area where Daniel's vehicle was recovered. Along the way, he and searchers have discovered the human remains of six other people. His efforts are bringing closure to some families, but not his own. With his citizen army of searchers, he's doing what law enforcement hasn't done. And the police department should be watching and learning from this man, not disregarding his efforts. David, you have become my friend, and I salute you for your dogged determination to find your son. I hope that it happens soon, and I would encourage anyone with information about David Robinson's case to reach out to Buckeye Police or go to pleasehelpfinddaniel.com or call 803-200-7994. As I've talked about the unfathomable number of missing persons each year in our country, I want to mention that my list includes cases where I've personally been able to work with family members. I've tried to highlight cases that you find on Profiling Evil. They represent different ethnicities, races, and cultures. We look at uh, the indigenous populations, African Americans, Asians, the old and the young. I've really tried hard to follow cases where I can get the most information for evaluation and the most support from people close to the case. To me, this isn't about race, 
age or any other demographic. It's only about spotlighting people who have been victimized. I just wish there was more time and adequate resource to tell more of their stories. Now, I want to end my ramblings with two more cases, this time cases involving children. These are the most painful to tell because they tear at our sense of goodness and our need to protect. Let's chat quickly about Summer Wells, who police now theorize may have just wandered off. Now, this was one of the theories I presented from the very beginning. And if you watch my videos, you're going to hear me say over and again that we can't discount the possibility of Summer wandering off on her own and having an accident. Absolutely, abduction is a possibility. Homicide by stranger, or more sadly, by someone close to Summer is a possibility. But I think of her parents and the families of many other persons that are out there being harshly and perhaps prematurely judged by those of us who don't have adequate information. And I really feel for them. Now, folks, I don't know if they had anything to do with it, but if you know something about Summerwell's disappearance or about her location now, please reach out to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations immediately. Say something. This could be the holiday miracle that will bring peace to so many people in her life and, frankly, around the world. You can reach TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. And finally, imagine fleeing a war-torn country or some other hostile environment to a place where you didn't understand the culture, the community, or the language. Then imagine your worst nightmare as your three-year-old child disappears from your apartment complex playground. Well, that's exactly what happened to a refugee family in San Antonio, Texas, and they are now facing a horrible holiday season. Lena Keel was playing near her family's apartment a few days ago when she mysteriously disappeared. Police have searched all of the apartments in the complex multiple times, and the police chief is deeply concerned that the child may have been abducted. Lena is white. She's about four foot tall and weighs about 55 pounds with straight, shoulder-length brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes. And folks, if you have any information regarding this child, please contact the San Antonio Police Department immediately at 210-207-7660. In a year when we focused on how many people are lost through pandemics, we seem to forget the annual pandemic of missing and murdered people. Since 1960, more than 6 million people have disappeared in just the United States. They will never return home, most likely. <laughs> Imagine what this number would be globally. Now think of the families, the extended families, and the way that you and I in the global crime community have felt about these cases. You've invested time researching these cases. You've been praying for them. And in some cases, you've even been donating toward funds to help find them. We are suffering as a global community when the forces of evil prevail. My hope is that we will all commit to doing better in 2022 and that we look for ways to be blessing the lives of other people. So before we pass judgment on those associated with criminal cases in the news, imagine how difficult the holidays must be for those who truly do not know what happened to their loved ones. Gabby Petito's mother said it best a few days ago as she shared how difficult Christmas was without her beloved daughter. I hope that we'll all think twice before passing judgment on these cases. I hope that we'll all think twice before passing judgment on these cases. It is so tragic when we see people with filming videos of mean-spirited name-calling or showing up and harassing people involved in these cases standing in front of people's homes and shouting cruel comments to the associates. 
I hope that we can find it in our dialogue to just be a little more understanding and a whole lot more inclusive. I hope that we'd stay home rather than insert ourselves into crime scenes or quiet neighborhoods in pursuit of views or likes. Let's leave those kind of activities to law enforcement, the folks with the authority to be there. Now, and to all of you, Happy New Year. And to the families who have occupied my thoughts during this holiday season, I hope that you find some measure of peace. Now, to the predator who has caused something bad to fall upon another, I hope that an ounce of goodness pricks your heart. Now would be the perfect time to begin fixing the mistakes that you've made. Get out there and contact law enforcement immediately and help bring some of our missing and murdered home. I really hope we have a whole lot less to talk about in 2022, folks. And until then, we'll see you soon at the next crime scene. 